For this video, we're going to be showing the application of the sugar tong splint. One of the most common splints you will see in the urgent care and ERs. Everybody will get an opportunity to put this splint on. This is, like Justin said, one of the most common splints that is applied for both bone forearm fractures, distal radius fractures, anything that will need to immobilize the patient so that they refrain from supination, pronation. We're gonna do this customized. We're gonna use the stockinette and cast padding. We're gonna make it look really nice and it's gonna function perfectly. Sometimes this splint will be used for the duration of a forearm fracture and they will never actually be placed in a hard cast. So we'll use the splint and customize it for you know up to four to six weeks sometimes just for a forearm fracture. Tough thing to remember is they're gonna have an acute injury. So as you're applying your stockinette, we like to bunch it up and then slide it right up the arm. In that sliding technique, you kind of stretch the stockinette at the same time so that you can slide that up without moving the arm around a lot. It, it just seems to glide up the arm really easy. It's also nice to tape your thumb stockinette down, makes it so it will not pull up later on during the application or in post-application. So the patient, especially younger kids, tend to pull at those. So application of the cotton, Justin's gone up just above the elbow, enough that when he pulls that stockinette back, it'll make a nice soft edge around the top of the sugar tongue splint. Good technique going through the thumb and web space. All right, here we go, pulling out the, the fiberglass. It's always good to, to uh, measure it. Uh, oftentimes we eyeball it, and we're usually spot on, but for myself, there's nothing more frustrating than when I cut that too short. You always wanna make sure you're a little bit long. You can always trim it back, but once it's short, you can't make it longer. One thing we see a lot is these sugar tongs coming in and they are way too long. They extend volarly and dorsally to the fingertips often. Sometimes we'll see them go past the fingers, they fold them back and they're still impinging the MCP joints. So they can't move their MCPs and they can barely move their fingers. And that's frustrating for the patient. The patient has an injury. We're trying to help them heal. So we're trying to teach you how to apply this splint to help them heal. The important part of that is if they can flex and extend their fingers, that is going to flex their muscles and the muscles are gonna help pump out the fluid. As you see, we use the stockinette to help hold that splint in place. Makes it a lot easier for application. You can also use the patient to help hold it for you, as we are here. Oftentimes, a patient, especially a pediatric patient, will come with their mother. It's always good to put their mom to work and have them hold the fingertips or the back of the humerus to help stabilize the patient. This is a very cooperative patient. You see we start proximally, wrap it around and anchor itself and then we wrap posteriorly. This helps hold the splint, keeps it from migrating posteriorly. It's not gonna move distally if we have it wrapped in place so that just keeps the splint right where we want it.
good cutting technique to thin out that A-strap so it doesn't override the distal end of the splint. Also on the elbow, sometimes we'll slide the back side of the sugar tongue up a little bit higher so that it doesn't migrate. Uh, one thing you want to be cautious is to not have any wrinkles and make sure that if you do have wrinkles that they don't wrinkle in towards the patient, that they work outward. At this point you've got it wrapped, you can give a nice mold and depending on the type of fracture and the physician's instructions you might be asked to mold it into slight flexion or slight extension. Sometimes with that three point mold or oftentimes you're going to have to have somebody else to come help you to give you a third hand so you have that three point mold. At this point, check your finger motion. Make sure they've got good capillary refill and you're good to go.